All right, welcome into another duly noted podcast. We appreciate everybody for watching or listening. You can watch us, of course, at YouTube and Facebook and listen to us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, WRUF.com as well. We appreciate everybody who likes, follows, and subscribes. And also now we have the ability to text message me and tell me what a, how great I look on this podcast or not great. Uh, the text message number now is uh, 352-780-0721, 780-0721. So you could call that at any point, or not call it, but text it if you have a question. Uh, a little bit, just a little bit, we're going to be welcomed by uh, my friend Drew Copeland, who is um, one of the, uh, from Sister Hazel, of course. Uh, we've been doing this every year. We've had this battle to see who can win the bowl. Uh, we only picked the SEC bowl games and the championship games, um, but he is uh, he has won three in a row. Don't forget our title sponsors, of course, uh, the great people at uh, ABC Fine Wine and Spirits and uh, Gainesville uh, uh, Titan MRI. Who, one of my best friends, Joe Calorio, at Titan MRI, you'll visit the only locally owned and operated MRI imaging center in town. Call them up and start feeling better today, that's MRI.com, and I can tell you, I am not just a, um, not just an endorsing it, I am a customer, because I've been there a few times, and probably will be in there a few more. And I'm imagining that our, our first guest here today has maybe been in there or been somewhere to get some treatment in the last couple of years, as he gets older as well. Uh, but, but he's crowing right now, three in a row, that he has beaten me, and they haven't even been that close. It's kind of embarrassing, to be honest with you. We welcome in Drew Copeland from Sister Hazel. What's up, Pat? How are you? Good, man. I can hear you. I'm trying to figure out your T-shirt, though. <laughs> Is there really a, a, a surfing team that, that at Florida? Yeah, I'm sure there has to be. <laughs> As long as you don't have to get up on the board, we'll be all right. All right, so it, it's a shame that you know, we can't get together uh, to do this because every year I have to take you to lunch after you beat That's me, right. and it's really embarrassing. And um, you know, I, I, when I have to pull that credit card out and pay for it, so I, I heard you were going to get. I actually had some there was some stuff that delivered here earlier. Oh, there was. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We we made sure that we get we took care of you, because. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Have a great lunch on me, okay? Now, uh, technically, I'm going to have to uh, I'm have to pay that up, and of course, uh, we we also donate to Stop Children's Cancer. The loser has to donate. Obviously, uh, that has been me uh, for for the last three years. But I I don't know. Are you ready? Are you physically, mentally ready to uh, to do this this year? Well, it is. It it wasn't fair. It's not a fair world, and and, and it's just um, if if they had the same exact resume and their name was Iowa, they wouldn't have been in. Yeah, it's just. The way it works, and the, and unfortunately, this is a system we've created, where the 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 rich get richer, and then they get richer, and then they continue to get richer, and everybody else is left out, and 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 seeing they're going to a bowl game they're not happy with. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I and I understand. I've heard the argument that well, look, if they if they beat Alabama and if they beat so and so, then they're they're going to try to pull. They can try to pull that game on the end of the day. 
teams that may have been more deserving that are not getting that chance. And I just think that's not really right. But I'm ready to pick whatever you want to do. Okay. Hey, look. No, I, well, we'll I'm, start I'm, out with that game. Clemson. I'm Ohio playing with money in the course. bank at this point. So. <laughs> Clemson, Ohio State playing in one semifinal. And, um, you know, I, I, you know me. I, I'm, I'm going to try to stick with uh, pick some, some underdogs, but I'm going to pick the favorite here. Uh, I think Clemson's. I, I think they're going to beat them badly. I don't, I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's going. I don't think it's going to be necessarily close, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout. But I'm I'm with Clemson on that as well. All right. See, so you 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 know that that's an easy win. How about Alabama Notre Dame? I know you you're uh, with your Irish heritage. <laughs> Which, Hold on, I think I saw. Wait a minute, I think I that's think Scottish I saw. actually. I thought I saw some corned beef in this uh, in this bag you sent me. <laughs> um, now, nah, man, I, you know, look, uh, Alabama is consistent, and they peaked at the right time, and they're they're playing really well. I mean, they made us look like a very average team at the in the in the SEC championship, and we're not. I think you know, I think we we've, we've watched that all season. We've got a great team, and they made us look average. Um, so now I'm going to go with Alabama on that on that one yeah one of our games already got canceled before we could pick it the music city bowl so um and and by the time yeah, i was wondering about i was wondering about clemson too didn't they have some issues at some point i, I mean i know they trevor did. lawrence yeah I, I think everything is pretty good now as far as we know but you know that's the thing about this whole COVID thing is a lot of times like for example with us we'll find out wednesday at 809 what players aren't available for Florida? We found out today that Kadarius Tony, Trey Grimes, and of course Kyle Pitts, as we already knew, have, have opted out, which I don't blame them. I mean, yeah, they've yeah. done everything they can do as, as seniors, and I understand it. Yeah, that hurts, but yeah, I get it. Yeah, it may change your pick. We'll see. All right. <laughs> no, we go to, because no. we're going with <laughs> SEC the rest of the way Tulsa, Mississippi State, and the Armed Forces Bowl. I don't understand how Mississippi State's in their Armed Forces Bowl because if I was going to attack any state, it would be Mississippi State. But, <laughs> but I don't understand how they're in there. But who do you like in that game? I, I'll go Mississippi State. You're going to go all SEC again? I'm taking Tulsa. All right, Tulsa's go Tulsa. I, I, well, I don't know that I'm going to go all SEC. It depends on what games you got because I'll tell you, if South Carolina makes it into a bowl <laughs> and if they actually get to play – uh, that's going to be really a hard one to pick. Make it into a bowl, and then they couldn't play. So with two <laughs> and eight, they got into a bowl game because the SEC said you must play in the bowl games under uh, under strict orders. So um, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, we're not going to get to the South Carolina game because they didn't play it. Uh, TCU uh, Arkansas in the Texas Bowl. TCU Arkansas. Man, you know what? And what's so funny, man, is I, I actually pulled for Franks like every game he was playing in, except for obviously the game against us. Um, they just weren't very good. Um, this I don't is know. live TV, by the way. You, you know, these pauses aren't, the effect aren't working on me. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Arkansas. Okay. SEC. I am too, probably. I don't know. I'm the same way. Like I want, I'm going to be rooting for Arkansas because I like Felipe a lot, and I actually like their coach. Um, we'll see how that happens. Big one here: the Peach Bowl, Cincinnati undefeated against Georgia. Wow, I didn't get to see many Cincinnati games. Um, but Georgia's limping. They're limping along. They're not. They're not playing their best football. You know what? I'm going to go against my my norm. My norm here. I'm going to go Cincinnati. And this is where I'm going to take the lead with the Georgia pick because here's why: Cincinnati is going to be just like it was in that Sugar Bowl when they played Florida, and um, you could tell they just weren't up to that level. They thought they were. They were undefeated uh, under Brian Kelly. But then all of a sudden, Tebow and all these guys, you know, Riley Cooper and the guys, when it's going to be the same kind of deal, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it better be. I need to win this week, this year. 
All right, what about in the Citrus Bowl, which I know is your favorite bowl, uh, Auburn and Northwestern? You can't sell citrus, can't sell citrus without UT. Um, so who was it again? The Auburn and Northwestern, the, the fighting Pat Fitzgeralds against uh, the team without a coach. Yeah, they got nothing to play for. No. Yeah, I can't pull for Auburn in that one. I, I just don't think that's going to happen. Wow. I, I, I never thought no, I'd see the day when, when you would pick against the SEC in back-to-back -back games. Yeah, that's insane. I'm feeling right. very giving, Pat. <laughs> what about uh, the Gator Bowl, NC State against Kentucky? I'm starting to get tired of these games already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to change the channel on, on that game. I haven't even got to it yet. Uh, yeah, man, I, you know what? I'll root for Kentucky. I can do that. Okay. They they can't throw yeah. the ball, but that's okay. I understand. Yeah. We'll take NC State in that game. I'm, I'm, i got to figure a way to beat you. All right. In the Outback Bowl, where you get the Bloomin' Onions, Indiana, which feels slighted by where they got yeah. stuck, against Ole Miss, where there's no telling what Lane Kiffin's going to do on his Saturday night in uh, Tampa. You mean during the game or after the game? <laughs> Maybe during half time um, of the game. I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't put it past that. Um, man, what was Indiana's defense like? I didn't watch good. Many their, their problem is they don't have uh, and Penix is out. So, uh, you know, I – Ole Miss is such a flaky defensive team. They can't they can't tackle anybody. I'm trying to bait you into this pick. Yeah, this is I know. Kind of the trap I lead. I you know I think I'm going to go with Ole Miss. All right. Um, I am. I think Indiana's. Be... I think Indiana's reaction to getting slided is going to be a letdown. Not a, I, I think they feel like that this this is. A, I'm not sure they're going to take it as a chance to prove that they should have been there. Yeah, and that's, you know, the funny thing is about bowl games is some people call them pretend games, and I get it. You know, usually it's Jay Bellis or basketball guys that say that, but you just never know what the attitude is like for a team, you know, especially this year because nobody's on site. They're just going in the day before the game, and they're not getting the swag that they normally get, so they're probably not happy about that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what anybody is going to be like. Um, maybe it'll be fun. Yeah. You'll get to see what a lot of young guys look like. Yeah. You definitely will for Florida, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and speaking of which, in the Orange Bowl, where Florida was last year, and where we had a good time down there, Texas A&M and North Carolina. North Carolina's had a bunch of guys opt out, including both. I think both of their running backs that just destroyed some teams. Uh, Texas A&M, of course, feels slighted. I guess we're gonna, that's going to be the theme here, feels slighted. Yeah. I thought they were good enough to be in the playoff, no doubt about it, but it's not a fair world. Who do you I got know, there in the big I, orange bowl? I'm, I'm going with A&M. I thought they were, too. I, I thought it was a, a – I thought that we slept through that game until I watched A&M play the rest of their season, and then I realized, nah, that's, that's a pretty good team. So – um, yeah, I'm going with A&M in that game. I think we got fooled by the uh, A&M's opening game against Vanderbilt. They scored 17 points. They won, I think it was 17-12. And I think we all went, ah, it's the same old A&M. You know, they're not that good. And then Alabama destroys them. And, and um, you're like, ah, A&M's Kellen Mond. And the next thing you know, they're going up and down the field against Florida, which at the time we didn't realize how bad Florida's defense was. Right. Yeah. And they are. All right, the last game. I gave you the information about Florida guys opting out. I don't know what Oklahoma's story is, and we're going to have somebody on from the Oklahoma and Jenny Carlson in just a little bit. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see you pick against the Gators, I think, here for the first time ever. <laughs> that ain't never going to happen. <laughs> I, honestly, our whole team could opt out, and they're going to play like the, the you know, the Dazzlers are going to play for us, and I'd still root for the Gators. Um, yeah, I'm going with the Gators. I think we're really deep. Like, don't get me wrong, Pitts 
and Grimes and Tony, uh, that that's a pretty that's a pretty big kick in the gut. But man, we're deep. We got, our running backs can catch out of the backfield. We still have a, a trough of a, a trough. We still have a lot word? of receivers. <laughs> yeah, it is now. Um, a stable is what I was looking for, but I've been eating so much over the holidays. I just came with trough. Um, <laughs> There is a, we have a stable of receivers, man. And I, it'll be a chance. Like I said, it's honestly, it's going to be like a spring game in, 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 in December or January, yeah. whenever the bowl games are going to be. Absolutely. Um, you're going to see a lot of young guys play. I'm picking Oklahoma just so you know. And here's why. I I, I, it never fails. I mean, I always pick against the Gators when I think it'll maybe inspire them to win. You know, that's, that's the way it's worked for me for all these years. I've been thankful for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge Gator fan. So are the coaches. I'm actually more. I'm actually more mad when you pick for them than I am when you pick against them. <laughs> well, what what has it been like for you? I mean, you guys, I know, have uh, done done some concerts and stuff, but uh, and done some private things. But uh, for you and 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 uh, Ken and the guys, I mean, what's it been like for you? Man, it's been a. Uh... It's it's a it's a double-edged sword. I mean, but it's there have been some blessings along the way, and, and a few of those have just been the time I've gotten to spend with my family. Uh, but at this point, like a year into it, they're like, "You should probably go tour some." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, get out of the house already. Um, <laughs> but we're, we've tried to do a few things. Um, it's a little bit like reinventing the wheel. And uh, live stream stuff is is uh, just not the same as a live show. The few times that we've gotten to play in front of an audience has been awesome. We did some drive-in shows out in Texas uh, with a band called Everclear, and um, we, we've done a, a few other events. Uh, but it's it's just really hard right now with all the restrictions. So we're just look we're we're uh, we're keeping our head down and trying to do the things that we can, and we're hoping that these vaccines kick in. And that people start to uh, to to get through this thing, and we can start getting back to some normalcy. I'm hoping that we'll be doing live shows again uh, in the spring. Yeah, I mean, do you have anything scheduled right now? There are things on the calendar, but there have been ever since this started, and we just they just kind of keep pushing it back. So I'll look at the calendar, and like we're in December now, so I'll look at January, and there's a couple of shows sprinkled through January. And then, you know, December, or, you know, January 1st, I'll check back and the, the ones that were closest will be gone, you know. And so they just kind of, they put it on there. They hope it's going to happen. As we get to that window of, of no return, they either pull the plug or we, you know, pull the trigger, one or the other. So do you have to keep practicing to make sure you remember all the songs? I probably should, should have. <laughs> <laughs> there have been, been a few shows that I've mumbled through. That's why I'm the harmony guy, man. I don't have to remember all the words. <laughs> yeah, we were thinking about that. You guys could write a song for this uh, podcast, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. It will be well, the theme song. We've threatened to do that before, but it it never has quite worked out for some reason. I yeah, you rejected everything. You've rejected everything I sent in. I never understood that. But you've got you've got time on your hands now. I I do have that. That's the truth. Uh, what did you get for What did you get for Christmas? What was your best gift for Chris, Christmas? Man, I gotta tell you, I'm embarrassed about all the stuff I got for myself. <laughs> Should have never. I mean, seriously, I, I got. I think probably the coolest thing I got was I got a new grill. It's like a smoker grill combo, and it's one yeah. of those pellet feeder things. And um, I've always been old school, man. I grew up with my dad when we used to smoke uh, stuff on the back porch. We would, you know, it was the kind of stuff where we'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go out there and stoke the fire and pour some more apple juice in a little container and, the, you know, the meat's over here. Um, so I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because this thing has, like, an app on my phone so I can, like, dial in the temperature, you know, while I'm sitting inside. And, and uh, But it's really cool. So that, I was really excited about that. Um, and then my wife got a bunch of uh, furniture for our, our front porch, which was, uh, you know, desperately needed. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen your front porch. I understand that. <laughs> by the way, we got a, a text message on the uh, the text message line that uh, by the the number now, brand new number three five two seven eight zero zero seven two zero, says Donnie says go Drew. He doesn't say where to go though. 
<laughs> What's up, Donnie? Donnie is a diehard Gator. Donnie and I have known each other for as long as we've been alive, which is uh, all of 26 years. So good, good to see you, Donnie. <laughs> It's pretty amazing that you still have all that this here. You know? Yeah, I did the white beard for Christmas. That was just a just a thing for Christmas. How how far did you let it go? Because I know how far mine got. Mine got to bad proportions. Yeah, it got it got to where I was pretty uncomfortable with it, um, yeah. and then I then I trimmed it back a little bit. But uh, it was funny. I was talking with a friend of mine uh, who lives up in Nashville, and and he's in the music business as well, and. Um, <laughs> He texted me and says, it's gotten pretty bad when my biggest decision is whether I have to shower today or not. And it's like, I'm like, I vote for the shower. Uh, you should probably <laughs> should get that one done. Yeah, I, it, I think I went about four months without wearing long pants. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, we'll yeah. let you go. This is the man who wrote the lyrics. You can wear flip-flops on Christmas Day, and this year you could not, okay? And I did, and I got very cold wearing flip-flops on Christmas Day. I did too, and on top of that, me and my nephew and my two sons jumped in the pool uh, just to say that we did. The, I think, I'm serious, the pool was 54 degrees. So we did, we heated up the hot tub, but we jumped in the pool for like a polar, a polar swim. So uh, it was pretty fun though. I'm, you I'm sure the video will be put all right, I feel pretty good about this. I think I'm going to beat you this year, okay? I, I feel good about it, but I still am going to owe you a lunch. You food that you, uh, I sent over there for you, okay? Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. All right, Drew, thanks a lot, buddy. Hopefully we'll see you All right, soon. See you, man. All right, All right, sounds Drew good. Copeland joining us from Sister Hazel. And, and again, we do this every year. We battle on the picks, and uh, he's won three in a row, and hopefully... It's not four in a row. We'll be up with Jenny Carlson in just a little bit. Uh, again, uh, just to tell you, Facebook and YouTube is where to watch us. If you want to listen to us whenever you want to on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and WRUF, remember to like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Our text message line now is uh, 352-780-0720. And we're so thankful to our great sponsors, uh, ABC uh, Spirits and um, Titan MRI. We appreciate them so much. We've got some more lined up. A little bit later in the show, we are going to have the uh, Leonardo's Millhopper Picks Contest. And here's what we're going to do with it. It's going to be kind of different. We're going to do one today, and then we're going to do another one Friday and see who could get into the mix. We've got, we got some more guys who got into the mix. It was a weird uh, picks contest last week because the, the, the quick pick four one of the games got canceled, so we couldn't pick it. So uh, we still ended up with five people who got in, and now we're uh, the numbers are pretty good. Uh, George Luttrell, Clyde Shampoo, or Shampoo, uh, Tim Bowline, probably didn't pronounce that name right either, Bob Julian, I think I got that one right, and Tim McDaniel, and also Pete Nyholm got in again. So, and again, what we're doing is we're taking every week's winner, every time we do a show, the winner of that show uh, of the picks, um, and if it's a tie, we just throw them all in there. You're all going to be in a hat at some point at the uh, well after the Super Bowl. We may even do it before the Super Bowl. We'll have a special Super Bowl contest instead. We got a great prize package which we talked about last week for you. We will get to uh, the uh, Leonardo's Millhopper picks in just uh, a, a, after we talk to Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoma. I've known Jenny a long time. Look forward to seeing her. Um, she is. Uh, she does a great job out there uh, covering all the sports. And we're going to talk to her about Oklahoma's football team. And it is weird that we're sitting here and we're talking about the Gators playing Wednesday. I, I, I just can't – I don't know if it's because of where Christmas fell, because obviously of what we're dealing with with this, uh, with this virus. And um, it's, it's been so we such a weird season. It just seems like it's gotten weirder every time you think it can't get any weirder. It's really strange for to Florida to play in the uh, SEC championship game and then turn around just a few days later, what, a week and a half later, and you're playing in your bowl game. That doesn't usually happen to Florida. I mean, uh, usually it's a, a long bit of rest, and then you, after you rest for a while, you come back and you play um, 
you practice here, and then you go down there, and wherever it is, and you practice for five days, and you have press conferences, and you have all this other stuff that happens. None of that happening. So um, certainly was is is a different scenario, and it's that way for everybody. That's why us doing the picks the picks here. I don't have any confidence in any of my picks, like those confidence pools you do. I don't. I do have confidence in both teams winning in the national semifinals because everybody still cares a lot there. We just don't know who cares in these other games. That's the hard part. Do you really care? I mean, I, I think the players that are going to suit up for Florida, for example, are going to care. Um, and the players where they lost, the players were, were on offense so far. I mean, that's what we know. Like I said, we get a little list that's sent out right before the game. And that's when we find out exactly who's not available. Um, it's hard to say, though. Um, by the way, congratulations to Kyle Pitzer in order for a lot of things, but especially he was named All-American. I voted on that AP All-American team, and I had Kyle Pitts in there. I actually I had Kyle Trask in there. He finished second team behind Mac Jones. The question is, th does this mean Heisman-wise this, this has uh, – it doesn't have any influence, but a lot of the voters who vote on the AP are also Heisman voters. There's 60 of us, I think, 62, something like that. And I would bet that almost all of us, if not all of us, had Heisman votes. Um, so that is a little bit of an indicator. I voted for Kadarius Tony for all-purpose player, not for wide receiver, for all-purpose player, and he finished second team as well. There are other All-American teams you can make. There's, I think there's four in all. And you can still get one of those pavers or bricks out in front of the stadium. I don't know if I'm sure you've seen them when you walk by uh, Heavener Hall. Um, it's kind of a weird deal where they have um, these pavers, and you have to kind of look for them. And I know that um, you know one, the one year they pulled Aaron Hernandez is out of there because of, of him getting convicted. That's certainly not a, not a good thing. I, I think they need to do something about that in terms of moving all the other pavers up. <laughs> You know, so you don't have a blank one. This year, so people say, "How come that one's blank?" Let me tell you the story of Aaron Hernandez. It's quite a tale we weave here. Uh, all right, we got to get a break. We're going to take that break, and then we are going to come back with Jenny Carlson, who will join us from the Oklahoma. We'll talk all about Oklahoma football and and why they're a defensive team and not an offensive team. All of a sudden, who knew? Thank you for listening, and we'll be right back with more of another duly noted podcast. Thanks so much to our title sponsors, ABC Fine Wine and Spirits and Titan MRI, and to our pick sponsor, Leonardo's of Millhopper. You can find us live on Facebook and YouTube or listen at your leisure on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you find all your favorite podcasts. I'm excited to continue this podcast and to have your company on board as a sponsor. If you're interested in being part of the show, email me at patrickdooley54 at gmail.com or give me a call, 352-317-3444. Titan MRI, North Central Florida's premier independent diagnostic testing MRI facility. At Titan MRI, we're focused on you, the patient, having a great customer experience. Our MRI equipment is modern and 75% quieter than any unit in its class. And our MRI unit has one of the largest openings of any of the newer high-strength MRI units, which allows comfortable scanning for potential claustrophobic and larger patients. At Titan MRI, we look forward to serving you. All right, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast. We appreciate everybody for clicking on and also let you know that at Titan MRI, no insurance is no problem. And Titan MRI has same-day scheduling available. Call them up. And start feeling better today. That's TitanMRI.com. It is a great pleasure to welcome in our our guest. Uh, we just had Drew Copeland on. Now we've got a great guest. It's gotten a lot better looking because we're joined by Jenny Carlson of the Oklahoman, and that is uh, that is meant to be a compliment to you and an insult to Drew Copeland, who was on beforehand. I don't know Drew, but I'm sorry, Drew. I did not expect for Pat to throw you under the bus like that. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. Well, let's talk about this Oklahoma uh, football team that, that kind of, uh, I don't know if surprising is the word when they lost those two games early and you kind of felt like the season was going nowhere and the, the Big 12 wasn't going to get in. 
and then the way they played lately, it's it's uh, they've they've certainly gotten better defensively. Yeah, you know those those two losses were shocking. Just in the the fact that that Oklahoma was was in control of both games in both instances, and you know really just fell apart late. Um, you know defensively not good late, offensively not good late. Um, obviously, you know, uh, breaking in Spencer Rattler at quarterback, you knew there'd be some growing pains there, and there certainly were, you know, but the thought uh, after last year and the improvement the OU defense made under Alex Grinch in his first year as defensive coordinator, you know, while they weren't ready to, you know, beat uh, LSU necessarily in the national semifinal, they were an improved defense. So the thought was, hey, you know, they're going to continue that trajectory but I think we saw early on the loss of, of some guys that, um, you know, were, were clearly some of Oklahoma's best players a year ago are now in the league, whether you're talking about Kenneth Murray at linebacker, Neville, Neville Gallimore at defensive line, or Parnell Motley in the secondary. They just had, you know, they just had a defense that wasn't, um, wasn't able to just continue on and replace those guys right away. But I think uh, the thing that was the thing that really in my mind started to to turn the tide that texas game obviously four overtimes dramatic game rivalry game all of that but the thing is that oklahoma at the end of regulation they had the exact same problem that they had in those previous two losses offense started to sputter defense started to struggle they gave up a lead but then in the overtime they figured out oh over times multiple overtimes they figured out a way to regain momentum and that had really been a problem once the momentum seemed to have swung they just weren't able to recapture it so the fact that they were able to get that back sort of turn that game in a way that got it back in their favor i thought that was a pretty pivotal moment and it played out that way obviously getting back ronnie perkins on the defensive line ramondre stevenson on the uh, in the in the offensive backfield you know, that's like a that's like a midseason trade in the NBA right. or something. Get 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 great talent uh, to to come out in the middle of the year for you. But um, you know, yeah, they have been playing better of late. But uh, yeah, I think I think maybe the uh, growing pains that they experienced early on. I don't know if we fully appreciated how much those would be there in the in the early going for Oklahoma. And those players were suspended, correct? Yeah. So NCA suspension after. Uh, widely reported failed drug test. There were three guys that missed that LSU uh, semifinal last year. And uh, they were, I think it, I think it comes out to essentially half a season is what they were suspended for. And even with the shortened season that held, I think Oklahoma continually uh, talked to the NCAA about trying to get that reduced, um, but they weren't successful. And it wasn't until the Texas tech game that those guys came back. Right. Um, yeah. So, it, it, but they were they were huge. Obviously, huge parts of uh, both sides of the ball. We we saw just how much uh, they they impacted this team down the stretch. I'm wondering where the excitement level is uh, for Oklahoma. I mean, this is a team that three years in a row was in the playoff, and you know, I know that it's not real high here in this town in, in Gainesville, just because they're this is a team that's coming off two straight losses and. And uh, one of them was devastating, uh, obviously. But um, wh- where is do you think the mindset of the Oklahoma players and and the fan base? I'm curious about that as well. Yeah, you know, I think that I think there is probably in both groups an eye to some degree to next year, and not that that says that they're going to overlook this game. I think some comments made by some of the Florida players got their attention last week. So I think they uh, are definitely on alert. Um, you know, anytime there's a big 12 sec matchup, I think the, the big 12 teams and really, I mean, any team, if you're going up against the sec, you know, as the granddaddy is the reigning Kings, I think everybody sees that that's an opportunity. So not to say that this game doesn't, doesn't matter to them. I think it does a lot. Um, but I do think there is a, you know, what could this team be next year? I mean, obviously we don't know, um, as we've seen with Florida, you know, we've uh, obviously the announcement today by uh, Grimes that he was, uh, you know, leaving for the draft. There's going to be some of those decisions that are still out there for Oklahoma. Um, they're going to probably have some guys that, you know, they'd like to have back that they could have back, but that they won't have back. Um, but I, I think that, I think probably those guys, frankly, you know, it's guys like Ronnie Perkins that, you know, he hasn't had much film this year. And so the chance to, 
you know, have some have some film out of this game against right. Florida to be able to potentially show the NFL. I think that's a pretty big deal to him on an individual level. Um, but then I think more broadly, you know, the thought is, well, what could this team be moving forward? I mean, obviously Spencer Rattler will return. Uh, they do know that, um, you know, they've got a lot of their wide receivers are coming back. Uh, they're going to lose some guys on the defense, but I think they like some of the depth they're developing there. So I think there's definitely a, you know, where is this, where is this program right now? Because these are, they're, you're going to see uh, on Wednesday, some of the same guys that they're going to really be counting on next year. Like how do they match up against an SEC opponent? That's really pretty good. Uh, and I know that I know the Florida defense is much maligned and I'm sure that um, you know, I'm sure that's going to be something to watch for just what can Lincoln Riley and that offense do against Florida's defense. But, you know, I think, I think there's some level of anticipation to see, you know, where does this team measure up to, to an SEC opponent after, you know, last year LSU was buzz, you know, they were, they were steamrolling everybody. Right. So I'm real. obviously you'd love to match up with them, but nobody matched up with them. So um, I think this may be a little bit more of a telling tale for Oklahoma. Yeah, it's kind of funny in the SEC where everybody says, we're the best conference. There's no question, we're the best conference. Well, if you're the best conference, then when you play teams, it's going to be a bigger deal. And that's one thing you have to, you have to understand is that they're gonna, it's a big deal for them to play you, even if it's in a, uh, a New Year's Six Bowl or a, um, you know, a lower tier bowl. It's certainly in the playoffs, we all know how important it is there. But... Um, I, I, you know, Spencer Rattler was a guy that I think a lot of people expected to win the Heisman because everybody does at Oklahoma. How would you assess what his first year was like? Yeah, you know, it was it was more adventuresome than the last few quarterbacks they've had because, I mean, whether you, you want to talk about Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, or Jalen Hurts, they were all transfers. They were all guys that had had uh, experience before they got to, to be starter at Oklahoma at the college level. And that was not Spencer Rattler's path. He uh, showed up as a, you know, arguably the best quarterback in his class uh, a year and a half ago or so, sat behind Jalen Hurts last year. You know, uh, he wasn't, um, you know, he was a guy that I think even though they had Hurts, I think some people thought, well, let's see what he's got. But he really didn't right. play much at all last year. So it was really um, almost a, a, a starting from square one for Spencer Rattler. So, you know, he, he definitely showed early on some of the some of the things that I think some people felt like might put him into that Heisman conversation but as I mentioned before in those losses there were also you know some tough stretches and even you know even now in that Big 12 championship game you know I I, I think real highly of of Iowa State their whole team is really really good their defense is excellent um, but in the second half uh, of that Big 12 championship game oh you had six possessions that five of the six were, were were three and out punts you know and so they really played well in the first half but then you saw their struggles you know and so that's not all Spencer Rattler obviously you can't put all of that on him but you know they've they've had such high level quarterback play over the last few years that you just come to expect you know almost miracles you know just yeah. just great play from the get-go but I think I think he does I think he has shown a lot of growth I mean I, I I remember having a moment during that Big 12 championship game even that you know just you see him out there and there's just sort of an uh, you know a calm an air of that confidence about him that you know I think you just sort of see in certain quarterbacks that you just don't expect him to do something that is a head scratcher and you know uh, there are some guys that that just doesn't happen no matter how long they're starters but you know you, you've really started to see him sort of you know look more um at ease i think in, in that role and more comfortable in all the things that he does so it's going to be really interesting to see how he evolves you know remember like everybody else this was a guy that didn't have spring practice he would have benefited from that greatly you know, he had very limited, uh, limited time. Um, you don't see people anymore face to face. So it's almost like people that we, we actually lost one of our Thunder uh, beat writers over the summer. And I still oh. have a hard time remembering she's not with us anymore because I haven't seen anybody basically since March. So uh, yeah, no, but hey, Billy Donovan obviously shown to be a fantastic NBA coach. Um, I, I, I don't know how much I 
like the ownership situation he's coming into in Chicago, but I think the roster and the money and the stability is much more known there than it is here. Um, you know, obviously this is very much a rebuild for the Thunder. So I get why he did what he did. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's different. It's going to be different. I'm actually going there. The home opener for the Thunder is tonight. I'll be there and it's going to look different to not look down there and see him, you know, standing up and giving the referees a, a piece of his mind or whatever he, he would do during the game. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely a, it's a new era for Thunder basketball in Oklahoma City. Yeah, wearing a coat jacket he doesn't want to wear. He wants, he wants exactly. to rip off. Hey, listen, every every basketball coach everywhere is so glad that these rules have changed on what they can wear. I have heard nothing but positives from coaches when I ask them about, yeah, you know, you don't need to wear a suit or you can wear, you know, slacks or whatever. They're just over the moon about it. They may never go back. Jenny, we appreciate your time as always. Thanks so much for joining us and a Hopefully one day again I will see you. You know, I mean, you know, I'll be out. Maybe I'll be out there for softball again. You never know. We we were talking softball this morning. Can't wait to get that back uh, here in Oklahoma City. We missed it a lot last spring, but uh, hopefully, hopefully the vaccine and everything will get us back to some level of normal before the years before 2021 is out. At least. Yes, exactly. Jenny, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Jenny Carlson from thanks, the Oklahoma, Beth. and we Later. appreciate her. Uh, for being on this show, and we will uh, we'll take another break. Uh, when we come back, the Leonardo's Mill Hopper picks, the quick picks are coming up. And yes, we're giving you two opportunities to be a winner on this one. You can you can uh, pick today's games, or they're not today's games. They're the games we're going to give you today, and then we're going to give you other games on Friday. Friday's going to be an interesting show because we are uh, we're going to have Max Starks on as well as at least one other guest and. Um, we're, um, it's going to be interesting because right from there we go into football and we go into the playoffs. Friday's going to be weird. It, everything is weird about this year, including the postseason. Right now, though, we'll take a break. We'll come back with the Leonardo's Millhopper picks, quick picks, right after we take this break here on another Duly Noted podcast. Thanks so much to our title sponsors, ABC Fine Wine and Spirits and Titan MRI and to our pick sponsor, Leonardo's of Millhopper. You can find us live on Facebook and YouTube or listen at your leisure on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you find all your favorite podcasts. I'm excited to continue this podcast and to have your company on board as a sponsor. If you're interested in being part of the show, email me at patrickdooley54 at gmail.com or give me a call. 352-317-3444. Titan MRI, North Central Florida's premier independent diagnostic testing MRI facility. At Titan MRI, we're focused on you, the patient, having a great customer experience. Our MRI equipment is modern and 75% quieter than any unit in its class. And our MRI unit has one of the largest openings of any of the newer high strength MRI units, which allows comfortable scanning for potential claustrophobic and larger patients. At Titan MRI, we look forward to serving you. All right, welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast. We got a uh, another uh, question from the uh, text line. And again, we've got sponsorship availabilities. Uh, not many. We're running out because we've, we've been doing a good job of selling them. And uh, if you want to sponsor the uh, text line, uh, certainly that's open for you. Three things is still available, too. i got to get to that as well. But... Um, Daniel wanted to know, for the first time this year, I am concerned with the offense with all the opt-outs. Well, you should be. Uh, I don't, I'm not buying Drew Copeland's optimism about the young players playing. I think that they do have good young players, and obviously they still have some good receivers, and they still got that guy, a quarterback, who's pretty good. Uh, but we have, we've seen the offensive decline uh, that happened kind of in the middle of that stretch with Kyle Pitts was out. Uh, I don't know what they're going to look like Saturday. Um, I know they'll have a plan. I, I know that uh, they have a very good head coach and a very good offensive coordinator, and he will uh, probably get to get them a good plan. They'll still score some points. The question is, can they stop anybody? I don't know the answer to that. My guess is no. We haven't seen it all year. Um, and I wrote about this a little bit in my uh, back nine column for WRUF.com. 
about how this team was the hardest. It was like the most fun team to watch and the least fun team to watch in the same season. That's almost impossible to do. All right, we're going to get to the Leonardo's Millhopper quick picks right now. Here are the four games you got to pick. And again, I'll put these up on uh, Twitter late, late, later and make sure because we get a lot of response from that. Also, we can get them up on Facebook this week as well uh, just to give you an option. Here are the picks. And remember, you're picking against the spread. Clemson given seven and a half against Ohio State. Take Clemson. I didn't say that out loud. Take Clemson. They're going to kill them. Notre Dame is getting 20 against Alabama. 20 points in a semifinal game. I, don't, I would just, it, it'd be hard to bet actual financial money on a game like with given 20 points. But um, that's one of the games you have to pick. Florida, three-point favorite over Oklahoma. That was the line before the last two opt-outs. I don't know if it's come down. Not my problem. That's what I'm giving you, that gift. Florida giving three to Oklahoma. And then the, uh, the fourth one, Oklahoma State, two and a half point favorite against Miami. And that game, is, that'll be an interesting game. I, I think that'll be fun to watch. So those are the four games. And again, we'll do another one of these Leonardo Milhopper um, quick picks on Friday's show, okay? I'm trying to keep all the day. That's the thing. This, I don't know, for some reason, it's the whole, what day of the week is it has thrown me for, for like the last two weeks. And I think a lot of people... It has as well. Now it is time for three things. Three things still open for your uh, sponsorship availability. I think it's uh, it's something that's very popular. Usually I do it earlier in the show, but with two guests I couldn't get to it earlier. Number one, basketball. Don't forget starts his SEC play Monday. I'm sorry, Monday, uh, Wednesday also at nine o'clock. Weird deal. You got to have two TVs. Like I have two TVs in my office. I'll be able to watch them both. I'll have football on one and basketball on the other. Which one do you put the sound on? That's going to be the, the question. I don't know which one I'm going to put the sound on. But you're going to have basketball. Football start like around 8.15 probably. Basketball about 9.05. Basketball will be over before football, but you have them both on. Number two on three things. Uh, Mike White had a Zoom call today with the media, members of the media, and I got in on it. They still consider me a media member. And I appreciate it. And I waited till the end to ask questions like a polite media member because all those people are trying to do sports writer jobs and I'm just doing it for, uh, you know, for my fun, my pleasure, among other things. But I wanted to be able to see what Mike had to say about what they've been through with Keontae Johnson. Uh, Keontae Johnson amazingly wants to practice. They, they're having to tell him, no, you can't. And uh, until the doctors tell us exactly what it is, I just remember saying a prayer the night that the Keontae thing went down or the day that it went down and saying, I don't care if you ever play basketball again. I don't care. As long as you can live a normal life, I'm going to be the happiest guy in the world. And that's what the approach I'm taking. I personally kind of hope he doesn't play ever again. Uh, I don't want it, but if he feels like it's his decision, it's, it's really the doctor's decision, but it, it is a tough deal for a guy like that to give it up. He's actually helping them with scouting. And doing stuff like that and, and trying to be a, a kind of an almost an assistant coach uh, right now. But it's believe that's it's an amazing story to think where we were three weeks ago, man. I was almost in tears doing this show because I was so depressed about Keontae Johnson's situation. Um, so it is a miracle. It really is. Uh, Mike also talking, and this is one thing to watch, Florida is not going to be in SEC shape early. They have not done anything for two weeks. They haven't practiced. They finally got out Wednesday to practice. Uh, they're probably going to struggle early. I, heard, I certainly hope that nobody will say, that's it, Mike White's got to go. What those guys have been through and what he's been through, and he talked about it today. You can see his eyes welling up talking about hugging Keontae and how many times he's hugging to the point where his dad said, hey, you know, that's enough hugging. You know, That's my job is to hug him. No, no, Mike White feels strongly because... I think every, every, what everybody went through there, everybody, and that's Gator fans, that's everybody, uh, players, coaches, trainers, uh, the, the people over there in Tallahassee, Tallahassee Memorial, it is an amazing story. Um, and, and thankfully it had the right ending. And number three on three things, I had a Christmas wish. I haven't gotten it yet. Here's what my Christmas wish is. 
I want replay to be better. I don't want replay to go away. I want it to be better. I want us to watch games and go, well, that's got to be overturned or that's got to be right. And then you wonder if the guy is even like, maybe he went to the bathroom instead of watch, watch the replay. I mean, it's got to be more transparent. Remember in the, um, the league that Spurrier coached in, uh, how great they did with that. They actually had a guy, you know, a, a camera in the booth, and they were, you know, you could hear what the guy was saying as he was going through it. That was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. I loved it. That we need to go go to that in, in all sports. The NFL has got so many problems in officiating. I, it's amazing. You would think it would be better, but at the same time, you have to remember that the athletes are better. And as a result, they do things they're not ready for sometimes. But still, we've got to get better in officiating. And if that happens, I guess I'll be happy. That's all I asked for. That wasn't a whole lot to ask for. Uh, appreciate everybody um, for watching uh, or, or listening. And, uh, again, you can watch us at Facebook or YouTube Live and then um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. WRUF, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Remember, like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Uh, appreciate those of you who are on your treadmill right now. It's, you can get off. I'm allowing you after 52 minutes to get off your treadmill, and you've had a good workout. Um, until next time, by the way, thanks to Drew Copeland. Thanks to Jenny Carlson. Next Friday, or this Friday, in a few days, Friday, Max Starks is going to join us. May have a surprise guest as well. Until next time. That will be Friday. I'm Pat Dooley. So long, everybody.